Hey everybody, my name is Graham Zimmerman. I'm delighted to be chatting with you guys today. Um, you know, this is this is pretty cool for me. This is uh, this is this is kind of unique and something that that I've really been looking forward to. Um, so I, so I work as a professional climbing athlete and as a filmmaker, and I'm going to kind of dig into what that means a little bit, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about story, and I'm going to talk about why I think story is important. And we're also going to relate all of that to climate because I also work as a climate adv advocate and activist. Um, I think that a great place to start, though, is why I'm excited to be here. And, you know, I, I talk to a lot of outdoor recreationists, I talk to a lot of climbers, folks who are into hiking and paddling and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, I oftentimes get kind of pigeonholed in that, into that community. And to be here talking with you guys, um, folks who are invested in climate, climate policy and finding ways to craft games that allow us to think differently about climate policy is really exciting. It's really cool. And it's something that, uh, that is not honestly something that I've heard about much. And it's something I'm very excited to learn about more. So, um, but, but, uh, yeah, so thanks first off, thank you for having me. And, uh, and you know, I would really, I guess I should start with, with where I come from, what my background is. And so, so my background, um, in a nutshell is that I started climbing when I was about 15 years old and pretty quickly fell in love with it and, um, uh, fell in love with the mountains at large. And, uh, you know, and that took me through a degree in glacio hydrology and, and then I started climbing more or less full time. And, you know, this was, um, gosh, this is like 10 or 15 years ago now. And at, for, at the at the start, I was just a broke kid trying to climb as much as I could, and eventually I kind of saw some success with it in the sense of like climbing some harder routes in the bigger mountains of the world and the Alaska Range and in Patagonia and places like that. And and I started to kind of get some notoriety and started to you know kind of move towards being a professional athlete. I always I always had to have other work as well. Like I worked as a geophysicist for a long time. I worked as a search and rescue technician. Um, and some other things. But the thing that really allowed my career as an alpinist to blossom was learning how to tell stories. And, and that's really what I want to cover with you today. And, um, and as I've you know, learned how to tell stories, I've also learned to talk about climate. And I told you before that I worked at, or I, sorry, I studied hydroglaciology in college and it was something I didn't really know to talk about because communications around science and around policy are challenging. And it's a hard thing to get at, um, not only in terms of how to do it, but also it's, you know, it's intimidating. And when it comes down to it, what I've found over and over again is the answer is story. Um, so what is being an alpinist? And uh, what, is, what does that mean? Um, you know, that, that, that to me means going to places like this. This is a small tent on a glacier in a remote part of Alaska. It's a very simple experience in many ways. It's just me and a climbing partner, a tent, you know, a pile of climbing equipment and going and trying to make the first ascent of a big wall in the mountains. And, uh, and this is really what's drawn me to it. Sometimes climbing, you know, you see pictures in Everest where there are tons of people and tons of ropes and all that stuff. And, and if, if folks are into that, that's fine. Um, but for me, it's all about simplicity in amazing places and really challenging yourself and doing so with people that you really trust and love. And, uh, and so we take these different components of climbing, like ice climbing and rock climbing and big wall climbing, like you might do in Yosemite. And this is, this is mixed climbing on the right here. This is like, um, what you might, uh, like when you, when you climb, really frozen kind of like a frozen mix of rock and ice and uh and we'll go and climb our way up this stuff and and uh what we do is we take these and you know this is this photo here is in the canadian rockies um on a frozen waterfall but then we'll apply it to the big mountains and this is in canada this is two days up a route um uh on a new route that we opened a couple of years ago at a place near rogers pass and it's applying these techniques that we learn near the ground and these training kind of like simulations in places like Yosemite or in 
places like the kind of frozen waterfalls of the Rockies and we apply them to places like Patagonia or the Himalaya or the Karakoram. And it's really been special for me. And it's, uh, it's something that I've really enjoyed. And it's allowed me to sleep in some very cool places, which has been really neat. And, you know, the, but, the, but the, uh, the most important component when it comes down to it for me has been the partnership, the people who I do this stuff with. And that's been like, that's been, that's been the nugget that's really kept me, kept me going with this stuff. So, um, as we, as we kind of move out of that and we start to talk more about climate, um, you know, as somebody who is, you know, trained or at least educated in, you know, glaciology, um, and who has worked in geophysics for a number of years, um, I probably worked in geophysics for like I don't know, five to seven years, uh, primarily working in, in East Africa and in Northern Canada. And, um, you know, that, that work and that, you know, that education really set me up so that I had all the, I had all the data points. There was no question in my mind if climate change was real or if it, if it was us. Um, it was just how to communicate about it. And there was a, there was an organization that ended up approaching me, uh, this is a few years ago now called Protect Our Winners. And they said, listen, we know who you are. You know, you're, we know you're a, an alpinist, a fairly well-known alpinist. And we know that, that you have this background in glaciology. And, uh, and we'd love to work with you. We'd love to teach you how to be an advocate. We'd love to teach you how to tell the story of climate change. And, and so I've been working with them for a number of years now. And, uh, and, that's, and it's, it's been a really cool process. And as we've done that, um, or as I've worked with them, we've been doing a lot of studies on how people, how, or how best to talk about climate, how best to get at this conversation that feels so challenging. It's something that can feel, feel kind of politically divisive. It can feel, it can feel like, you know, something that we're kind of like setting ourselves up for an argument. Why are you doing this? Why do you believe that? And, um, you know, what we keep coming back to is, is story. We don't, you know, it's, you know, the, we can talk about science. We can, uh, we can talk about policy. We can talk about what's going well. We can talk about what's not. Um, but the thing that we have, the thing that we have that is most relatable is our story. And it really comes down to this idea of meeting people where they're at. And, uh, and, you know, it's, and it's really interesting. It's, you know, we've, we've kind of moved into the space where in many ways climate is this very partisan discussion. You know, one side thinks it's a thing, one side doesn't, um, or at least that's kind of what we're led to believe. But the fact of the matter is that we're all seeing changes in the world around us. The world is a, is a constantly changing place. And we each have our little stories for how that change is taking place and what that, what that change means. And sometimes meeting somebody where they're at and understanding somebody or having somebody understand you is as simple as just finding where your story threads cross and where you can relate, where you can find common ground. And then from that common ground can sprout understanding and from that can spawn action and change. And I think that that's the thing that I keep coming back to over and over again is how do we tell stories about climate? You know, I, I started this conversation by telling you that I have a background in glaciology and I love climbing. And that's what drew me to the climate change conversation. Um, you know, we could, we could be talking right now about extinctions. We could be talking about warming oceans. We could be talking about less snow. We could talk about economic impacts. And, you know, and, and I can talk about that stuff till I'm blue in the face and that's fine. I'm sure many of you can as well. But, but the most valuable tool that we're finding over and over again is these stories. And I'm, I gotta say that I'm really excited about um, what you all are doing. And I think that, you know, for me, storytelling is this, is this thing where I like, you know, I, I rattle on about my climbing, but, the, and then, and then as a storyteller, as a filmmaker, you know, I create content that people can engage with, things that people can watch. Um, and I've had a little bit of a little bit of a view into the virtual reality world, uh, which is I kind of I think about I think kind of closer to what 
you know, closer to the gaming world, closer to what you guys do. And, uh, and for me, um, it's really exciting because these are new ways to tell stories. And what I see you doing in creating games and in, in crafting experiences, um, you're crafting stories. You're providing ways to, to tell a story, to meet people where they're at. And if you can, if you can craft that in such a way that you could push forward the climate conversation, then that is really, really exciting. And you know, this is like what we're trying to do is we're trying to meet people where they're at. We're trying to show them why we care about climate and we're trying to allow them to relate to it themselves. And so as you launch off into this program you're about to get into, I really, I really just recommend thinking about your story and thinking about the story that you're creating and how that can be related to climate, how that can be related to human experience and how you can affect people with that. And, um, and I think that is a beautiful starting point for crafting the kind of world we want to live in. So, you know, thank you for the work you're doing. And if you ever have questions for the, about the work I'm doing or ways that I can help, please feel free to reach out. And with that, I wish you all the best. I wish you the best of luck and uh, keep up the good work. We'll see you out there.